Unless you've been living under a rock, you have been bombarded with creatine videos recently. And I decided to finally look under the hood and see what exactly is going on. I knew there was some recent research showing a lot of benefits for the brain, but it really seems to have exploded in my feed lately and uh, the videos that I'm shown by YouTube. And I wanted to see really what exactly is going on. Why is Rhonda Patrick on Diary of a CEO talking about it so much? And other posters. I mean, really, people who never talk about supplements are talking about creatine. Now, creatine has been popular for a long time. Matter of fact, there are charts showing its growth in popularity over the past 20 years, and it just continues to gain in search and gain in public interest. And this has a lot to do with the fact that it really has a lot of benefits, and the studies are continuing for creatine, so we continue to find out more, and we're continuing to find out more. One of the reasons I say, hey, with something like NMN, we're going to find out a lot more over the next 20 years than we have found out the first 10 years. So we kind of have to stick with it, keep writing it out, and keep finding out what we can. And according to my research, the recent boom in creatine activity can be directly parallel to the research showing its brain benefits. And more specifically, the dosage needing to increase to experience those brain benefits. And that's critical here, both for men and women who have have been underserved historically by creatine for reasons I'll get into. But I also wanna talk about my own experience because I did, after researching this a couple weeks ago, increase my daily dosage from five to 10 grams. So I wanna talk about what I experienced and give you guys some feedback in case you're gonna start creatine or increase creatine yourselves. Now, what they found, and I'm gonna paraphrase the research here, you should go out and watch Rhonda Patrick's video on Diary of a CEO because it's very fascinating. She breaks down a lot of information about creatine, but I want to give you an overview on why it's exploded so much recently. And this has to do with the fact that the first five grams or so could be a little bit less for some individuals, could be a little bit more, but that traditional five gram dosage mostly saturates the muscles, the cells in your muscles, and provides energy for your muscles, giving you better results in the gym, giving you better workouts, giving you better recovery. But taking that extra five grams begins to benefit the brain. And I don't know why the muscle cells load first, but apparently that's how it works with creatine. The muscle cells experience the energy first, and then that ATP function, which creatine provides to the cells, goes to the brain cells. And then you experience things like better thought, thinking sharper for longer periods of time, better management of stress, better management of maybe being sleep deprived, sleeping even better, but even sleeping less and not feeling worse. These are the kinds of things that the studies have found and people have been reporting. If you increase creatine, it won't overbuild your muscles. You will max out, you will get your max load in your muscles, and then it will go on to other cells in the body. This is important to understand. This is something that I think a lot of people have fears. Oh, I don't want to overbuild. I don't want to be too large. But you're only going to get that muscle building if you actually go work out. So creatine only works if you're going out and working out. Then if you work out a lot more, certainly your muscles can then build more. But it's not going to be strictly from the creatine. It's going to be because you went out and did more in the gym. So if you want to maintain your size right now, just maintain the workouts you're doing. They'll be a little bit easier. Maybe you get a few more reps in. Maybe you get a better recovery day or a faster recovery than you've been getting. But that main benefit from increase will be the brain power. I just have felt sharper when I went from five to 10 grams. And I was feeling pretty sharp already because of NMN, because of quitting most sugar. Although I've been weak a little bit lately because we're getting into that fall season and those Christmas snacks start showing up on the shelves and I get a little bit weak. But I seem to be able to manage some sugar or limited amounts of sugar a lot better than I used to be. So that's that's kind of a bonus as well. Now, the side effects of taking creatine or certainly taking more creatine can be an upset stomach. Some people around 15% apparently experience some stomach issues or loose stool issues or worse, and then you need to be a bit careful. What you can do is split your dosage. There's a couple things you could do. You can split your dosage. So you take that five grams in the morning, you take that other five grams in the afternoon. I take mine both in the morning, but I do split by a few hours. I take the first one first thing in the morning, 
I take another one around midday. I take Do Not Age Creatine. It's creatine monohydrate. It's the best one for aging adults if you're interested. I get mine from Do Not Age. Of course, that's where I get all my supplements. You can use my code PULSE, save that 10%, and get health points from them as well. They've doubled that for this week, by the way. The other thing you can do is take it with food. And most people don't take creatine with food currently. They take it with a beverage, they take it in the mornings, but most people don't think to take it directly with food. But if you're getting an upset stomach or you're fearful because you want to increase and your stomach is sensitive anyway, take it with food. That's going to help you take it a lot better and improve your chances not to have an upset stomach. Now, what I've personally noticed, and it's been pretty significant by taking that extra five grams, so much so that I've decided to continue it. And I'm a person who would suspend at times the five grams because I felt like I was getting a bit stiff, but it feels to me like the benefits outweigh any of the downsides. Some days I still feel a bit tight, but that strength is helping me with my own workouts, with my own tennis. What I mostly notice is that I'm able to focus throughout the match. I don't have dips while I'm out there, and that's a long period of time when you play a tennis match, typically 90 minutes to two and a half hours long. That's how long my tennis matches are, and on Sunday I played two of them, so over four hours of tennis, and I didn't have any performance dips. I played well, and I also did weight training that night. What I did notice was more energy or more of a spike of energy on my heavy workout day, which was Sunday, but I did have more of a dip the next day. I was more sore than usual, probably because I'd pushed myself harder, and I needed that rebound day, that recovery day, more than I usually do. A lot of times I feel like I can play the next day. Monday, I didn't go out and work out. I didn't play the next day. However, my recovery on Tuesday was fantastic. So two days after... I was back playing tennis again and again on Wednesday. And today I played this morning. I'm playing tonight. I ran 4K. I walked 2K. And I'm going to do weight training tonight. So we'll see if I have a recovery day uh, tomorrow where I'm kind of down. But I feel fantastic right now. And I'm ready to go train with my sons tonight for another couple hours. So that's the main takeaway for me. I've been able to sustain my focus. For me, the activity is tennis, but also in the afternoons with doing work and researching projects like this going through a lot of videos. I watched 30 videos on creatine. It was quite educational, quite informative. My biggest takeaway is that women have been underserved by creatine. Women are not taking enough creatine, especially when you consider the body improvements you can experience and the neurological benefits you can experience. Most people think that creatine is a gym rat substance. You take protein powder, you take creatine, it's like a steroid, you build muscle, and you do build muscle, but it pulls water into the muscles. That's another tip, by the way. You need to drink a lot of water when you're taking creatine. So if you up that dosage to 10 grams, be sure to up that dosage of water that you're getting every day. But it isn't a metabolic steroid. It doesn't affect you the way steroids change your DNA or change your cells. It's a substance that your body makes already, your brain manufactures it for energy, and taking creatine really doesn't have side effects or downsides. So there's no danger in taking it like there would be in taking a steroid. And women need to take creatine. It can help them. According to Rhonda Patrick, according to other research, women are not taking enough creatine, especially as they age. And we're all aging. And apparently, according to the science, we can all benefit by taking creatine daily. So women out there, it can help you. It can help you feel better. It can help you look better. It can help you think better. And check out Rhonda Patrick's video if you want to know more. I'll put a link to that in the description so you can hear what she has to say about this. But yes, I've experienced the benefits. I understand the craze. I understand why people are talking about increasing their dosage. It's something I never thought to do before, but I'm happy that I tried it out. Thanks for watching. I'll be back again soon.